Hi everyone, I'm Ajay, and today I'll be talking about contrastive code representation learning, a new unsupervised learning method for finding robust representations of source code functionality. We demonstrate that these representations lead to improved results on a variety of machine-aided programming tasks. Machine-aided programming tools are ubiquitous in programmers' toolbox, from security analysis to synthesis and completion, and even retrieval. State-of-the-art tools are increasingly based on machine learning. These can exploit details like human-written captions, um, comments, doc strings, as well as resolve ambiguities that static analysis won't be able to cope with. Current best models often pre-train on large amounts of GitHub programs. For example, language models flatten the program and treat it as a sequence of textual tokens. Then leverage natural language processing models like BERT and Roberta to perform self-supervised learning. BERT and Roberta use a mass language prediction objective that reconstructs a token based off of its surrounding context as a proxy that lets it learn some meaningful representation. However, there are many ways to express a single program. The JavaScript method shown on the left has been written by a person and has particular implementation choices. We can rewrite it into different forms that are equivalent. They have the same exact functionality. However, the textual form is very different, and this means that a reconstruction approach like Roberta or an autoregressive model like GBT will have to predict all these fine-grained low-level details, like variable names, like the implementation choices, in order to do well on their pre-training task. A single block of code can have many possible rewrites with equivalent semantics. Some approaches use abstract syntax trees to attempt to normalize some of these variations. However, many changes, like algorithmic ones, alter the AST. And some changes here that would also alter the AST include switching from variable interpolation in the string to concatenation and converting an if statement into a single line conditional. Prior work finds that learned models for code are very sensitive to semantics preserving transformations similar to these. We also find that Roberta, when pre-trained on code, does well in the natural code setting, achieving close to 80% average precision. However, in the adversarial setting, where there are up to three adversarial code perturbations, accuracy drops to worse than random guessing. This indicates that the pre-trained language model doesn't understand code functionality because the resulting programs have the exact same functionality and the same label. Our research question is how to learn robust representations of code functionality. We'll present a contrastive learning approach called ContraCode that does significantly better in this adversarial setting. Plus 29% average precision. At uh, four adversarial code edits, or 16 adversarial code edits, at, over a transformer baseline. On three downstream natural tasks, we also outperform the baselines, indicating that learning representations of functionality is quite useful, even on natural or modified code. Our hypothesis is that a good code representation is one where programs with the same functionality have similar representations. This hypothesis leads to a natural method. Given a program such as the one on the left using a for loop as its implementation choice, should have high similarity in representation space with equivalent programs, like one with a while loop. This can be encoded in a contrastive objective that maximizes representational similarity. But to prevent degenerate solutions, we will also want to minimize similarity with functionally different programs, like the negative shown in red. The programs. If we mine them from the GitHub unlabeled data set, it will be quite computationally intensive to identify equivalent pairs, and there actually might not be too many. That data might also be quite imbalanced based off a popular program to implement. 
using data augmentations is one approach to generate similar variants. But natural language processing data augmentations often produce invalid programs that really don't preserve the same semantics. Our key insight is to generate functionally equivalent programs quickly and scalably using source-to-source -source compilers. We implement a bunch of different code transformations, such as dead code elimination, uh, type conversion, identifier modifications like variable renaming, and regularization passes like changing the tokenization scheme. These are versatile and diverse, resulting in quite a lot of variety on the data set of GitHub programs. The contrastive learning framework is quite general and has been proposed before, both for text and for images and other modalities. The basic principle is to identify pairs of similar data points and attract them in representation space while minimizing similarity with pairs that are dissimilar. Contrastive learning over the course of pre-training results in clustering according to these choices of pairs. The selection of the pairs is quite important in order for shaping the final representation. Our selection of functionally equivalent programs as positive pairs and functionally different programs as negatives lets us cluster together functionally equivalent programs that result in representation. Applying this uh, principle to code is not trivial though. And there's a bunch of different implementation choices. We choose to adapt the momentum contrast approach that has been recently popular in vision because it can be computationally efficient, memory efficient, and achieves quite good results. In the data pre-processing stage, we take unlabeled programs and generate many variants using our compiler infrastructure. Each stack shown here on the right uh, is functionally equivalent. It has been generated with a different subset of the compiler transformations that I presented earlier. In training, each iteration will sample a batch of positives and tokenize them. Encoding these with a neural network FQ, the query encoder, and its exponential moving average of its parameters, the key encoder, results in two positive embeddings that are maximized in similarity. To get the negatives, we'll minimize similarity with past positives. These past positives in the cached queue act as negatives because they very likely come from different stacks of programs. And queuing these and storing them in a cache uh, saves computational expense. We show that contrastive code representation learning is architecture independent, allowing us to use transformers, as well as by LCMs and experiments. The critical contribution here is in the adaptation to the code domain, as well as our choice of data augmentations in the compiler. Our first task is type inference, using a deep typer data set proposed by Helen Dorn at all in 2018. This is actually a different dialect of JavaScript with different conventions, also showcasing a generalization from the pre-training to the fine-tuning stage. ContraCode, once fine-tuned, is able to successfully predict the types of the variables in this program, such as the message argument and the void return type for the method animations log. Here we show the accuracy of top one and top five accuracy a type prediction of each token using various baselines, such as static analysis at the top, GPT-3 codex, a recently proposed autoregressive model, transformers, and bi-directional LSTMs. Contrasted pre-training outperforms the mass language modeling pre-training baseline and improves the results of the transformer. On the bottom of the LSTM, it improves the accuracy at top one by 2.3%. It also improves the accuracy versus static analysis by 8.9%, which is quite significant. Combining the contrastive and mass language modeling objectives sometimes yields even better accuracy. The second task is code summarization, 
where a program is summarized in natural language. In this case, the caption and submit form. Various baselines are shown here in the table. Contrastive learning improves the transformer and outperforms ASD-based baselines as well as mass language modeling pre-training. In the third and final task, which we evaluate on both adversarial and natural settings, we propose a zero-shot code code detection benchmark based off of human-written programs. This benchmarks the variation in coding practices that actual students have um, submitted to the benchmark website HackerRank. The student on the left has chosen to implement the code in one particular fashion using a helper method process data, and the one on the right has used more of a flattened approach. The binary classification task is to detect whether these students' code solves the same problem. It's zero shot. Pre-training with mass language modeling improves the results of a transformer. But contrastive learning further outperforms that baseline, achieving plus 2% average precision. Furthermore, pre-training with both contrastive learning and mass language modeling achieves the best results on natural code a 5.6% average precision improvement. In the adversarial setting, where up to four adversarial code ads can be applied, all of these baselines, including mass language modeling, underperform random guessing. However, contrastive learning significantly improves the robustness of the representation, achieving 28.5% average precision boost. We can visualize the TSNE uh, maps of the various representations. Roberta embeddings don't cluster by functionality, which is indicated by the color, but contrastive pre-training does lead to clustering, according to functionality. In summary, we propose a self-supervised learning algorithm for code functionality. Thanks for listening.